Hello, I'm Charmaine Ironside, and today I am super excited to share with you basically everything I want you to know that I think is going to serve you so much on your journey to releasing weight, losing weight, lightening your load physically and beyond physically and emotionally and mentally in all the ways. So I want to start out by saying that what kind of inspired me today to create this video was um, I have been personally having a challenge of keeping my house in order. Um, I've got two kids, four and eight, and my own habits to work on. And so sometimes it just feels overwhelming to keep a beautiful, tidy, peaceful, minimalist home that just I can thrive in, that I feel calm when I look around, feel good. Um, it just feels like, I don't know if you can relate to this. I'm not going to talk about tidying for this video, but I want to share a segue, which is like, I'm like, I like it so much. It's so much maintenance to try to keep a nice home. Like there's always new stuff coming in. There's Kid goes to a birthday party, brings home a treat bag, there's new toys, they have a birthday, there's a whole bunch of new stuff, and you know, they bring home papers, and all. anyways. So, I was noticing, and I have been noticing in the last few months, I'm like, I want this beautiful, peaceful home, and the habits I have in place, currently, it's a work in progress, don't support that. So I desire this certain state that my home is in. And then the habits that I've learned in my lifetime don't support me continuously having that, if that makes sense. And so I kind of want to say, I wanted to share that because I want you to know that sometimes I feel like throwing in the towel. Sometimes I think I just got to get a smaller house. That's one of my thought processes. I'm like, maybe the house is just too big. It'll never be clean. And then I say that to my husband and he says, Charmaine, you're still, even in a smaller house, it'll just be even more like compact because we'll still have lots of stuff. And then the messes will just, there'll be nowhere to escape from the mess. And like, he's like, so the solution I jumped to of we need a smaller house, it's not actually the answer because there can still be a huge mess in a small house. Like the habits need to change. Yeah, sure. Maybe a smaller house might help too a little bit, but Overall, that's just a big solution jump versus looking at the day-to-day -day patterns and habits that will actually make a big change. And I think that transitions super well to those of you, or if you're watching and you're like, I want to lose weight. I want to live in a you know lighter body, smaller body, thinner body, body that feels like I'm not carrying such a heavy load. Um, and maybe you have jumped to lots of solutions. Like I just gotta, I just gotta go crazy and do this like regime, or I gotta go on this retreat where I lose weight, or I gotta get this procedure. Maybe you've jumped to a lot of solutions without just saying, okay, no, the habits, the structures, the systems that have gotten me here to this overweight body need to change and they need to incrementally change. Just like with my house. Selling the house, um, you know, getting an expert team to come in and clean the whole house without me actually changing the day-to-day -day structures and habits isn't going to be a long-term solution. It's kind of like dieting or crazy regimes with weight loss. You know, you could lose weight maybe. I could get my house to a beautiful state for one day, but then there's a maintenance and there's got to be some skills, some tools, some habits in place to keep that. Same with our body. We could go on a crazy weight loss retreat or something or a crazy diet or some place where they inject us with some vitamin and we eat like 400 calories a day and we shed all these weights, all this weight, but we're not actually changing our lifestyle, the day-to-day -day habits, and we're not literally learning tools that all help us keep it. So I kind of think weight loss, the journey of sustainable weight loss and the journey of me having a beautiful maintained home are very similar in a lot of ways. So that's why I'm drawing a bit of a parallel. And I also want you to know as I'm sharing what I'm about to share is I struggled with my body, shape, weight, confidence 
for most of, a, well, actually at this point, maybe it's not most of my life, but from about age 12 to age 28, I had a massive struggle. So 18 years, 16 years, <laughs> I guess my math is not great. Um, a huge struggle through my teens and 20s. And then when I was in my late 20s was when I really started to figure it out. Because in those early years, those 16 years of struggle, it was like throw a diet on it, try an extreme regime, try a pill, try a procedure, try all these things. And sometimes they worked, often they didn't even work. But even when they did work and I did lose weight, I always swung back and gained the weight back. And it's the same with the helps. If I don't learn the skills and I'm starting to learn the skills and if I don't change my energy and my thought process around it, it's never going to be sustainable and there's never going to be a state of peace about it. And that's what I really want overall for myself and for the world and for you is having a state of peace. It doesn't mean there's not going to be work. It doesn't mean there's not going to be maintenance. It doesn't mean there's not going to be tools we use and tough days and things like that. But Overall, there's a state of like harmony, like this is, I can get back to this and I can be here and I can sustain this. So that's what I want for you. So in terms of getting to a healthy place with our body, there's a lot of different components that play into it. So the diet industry, generally, the weight loss industry, generally, it's very like practical, like, okay, you got to eat less calories. You got to eat a certain way. There's lots of dogmatic diets, I call them, like very extreme diets where it's like, this is bad food, this is good food, anything in between, is, there's no gray zone. Um, they're just so extreme. And so what I found with that, and I played in that world from age 12 to 28, trying many diets on for size, um, gained and losing, gained and lost hundreds of pounds in those years. And what I found was also I entered that world as a career when I was in my early 20s. So I started trying to help people with their weight and noticed the same pattern that I noticed with myself was like, yeah, they, I can give them a meal plan and they can follow it diligently for a couple of weeks and see some results. But then it's not sustainable because as soon as life gets busy or they have a stressful event or they go on a vacation or the meal plan gets boring or you know results slow down they just like throw it out the window and then the, and then the weight comes back on and I was so tired of seeing that cycle I was so tired of it for myself I was exhausted it was mentally crushing physically exhausting so disappointing to keep gaining and losing those same pounds back and forth um, and it was exhausting to watch my clients do it. So I ended the struggle. And so I do feel like I'm very equipped to share what actually does work. In my experience, it's not a diet. It's not dogmatic, strict things. It's not extreme measures. In my experience, what works is combining practical tools with nutrition with moving our body, combining that with some lifestyle tools such as stress reduction, quality sleep, those two things, stress and sleep, I would say those are just as important, if not more important than the food. Now hear me out. This is why I say that. Because if you're exhausted, and you are super stressed, physiologically, your body will crave carbohydrates, sugar, not helpful weight loss foods in out of control ways. So if you're exhausted, not getting enough rest, quality sleep, quantity sleep, deep sleep, and you're stressed, not having much stress management in place, your life feels like it's chaos, feels like a tornado and then you're trying to follow some kind of eating regime that is strict it's it's setting yourself up for a disaster because you're going to crave the exact thing that's not going to serve you that's not going to get you to your goal um the carbs the breads the chips the alcohol is a big sugar 
you're gonna crave and your brain, you're gonna crave it. I'm not just saying this, this is scientifically proven. When you're tired and stressed, your body and your brain craves sugar, carbs, sweets, all the things. So we've gotta combine a nutritional aspect for sure. We've gotta get our body moving because, well, a couple things. When we move our body, we exert energy. Energy used through our body helps us release weight because the fat that we store in our body is energy. And so when we're doing workouts or walks or swimming or whatever, our body's using our fat stores to release. Um, and so we wanna combine the food. Also, if we're eating healthier and less, then the fat stores start to get depleted because we actually have to use our fat for fuel, for energy, instead of always only using the food that we're eating as fuel for our day. And not on top, on top of that, most people that struggle with weight are consuming more food than they need to just get through the day energetically. And so that's when weight gain starts happening, right? So we not only wanna stop the weight gain if it's happening, but we want to also start releasing weight. So exercise helps with releasing weight energy wise. And then also how much food we're eating and how many calories we're eating, that kind of thing. So that's the kind of scientific practical side, which is important. I'm not going to poo poo on it. I taught it for 14 years. Um, it's still important. And what I noticed is the people that struggle, they know what to do. They know what's the right amount of food ish. They know what's healthy ish. They know what to do for movement and exercise, but they're not doing it sustainably. It often comes down to this, sleep and stress, because their willpower is depleted. They're stressed, they're just trying to survive, they're in survival mode, and so all the good information about nutrition and exercise doesn't really matter, because their body's in survival mode, okay? So that's a big part of it, and so if you're relating to any of this, maybe you're having some insights, ahas, awesome. And then there's a third piece. So we've talked about kind of the practical, the exercise and the nutrition. Everyone knows that stuff. Maybe not, maybe you have questions about it, it can be answered and all that, but generally people seem to know that. So what I find some people don't realize how important the component of stress reduction, finding more peace in the day, relaxation, and quality rest. Some people don't realize how much that plays into the weight release. Weight, I call it weight release, by the way because our words are so powerful for our subconscious brain. If we keep saying weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, our brain's like, aye, aye, we're gonna lose it, and then we're gonna find it. Because what we lose, we almost always find eventually. So instead of saying weight loss, it's very powerful to say weight release. We're gonna release the weight. So I invite you to take that on for your own journey. I'm releasing the weight, I'm releasing it, and it's not coming back. Because we want this to be a lasting, sustainable, foundational, sticking journey that's not just a fleeting diet. Because those are exhausting. Those are those are in the rear view mirror. We are done with those, right? Okay, so I love talking about the lifestyle piece. It's pretty exciting to me, just like stress reduction. We could go into the how of that, like meditation, you know, sleep habits, all that. And I want to give you a broad level, broad level overview. So the third pillar that I find is super important is our energy and our mindset. Now, I kind of think of them similarly. So how are you thinking about yourself, your body, your abilities? What's your self-belief like? What kind of energy are you bringing to this journey? Now, on a very big overarching level, there's two types of energies and mindsets we can take on. One is I have to lose weight because I am flawed. I am ugly, I am fat, I am gross, uh, my belly looks bad, I've got a muffin top, I look horrible in photos, I avoid photos, I have to lose weight. I should lose weight. My doctor told me I should. That's, that's one type of energy that most people harness is the push energy, I call it. It's a pushing energy. It's a have to. It's a should. It's a heavy burden. Now, there's some instances I've seen where this kind of energy is good because sometimes people have to get to a point where they are just like 
Enough is enough. I am sick and tired of feeling this way. I am sick and tired of losing out on life. I am sick and tired of avoiding photos. I want to be in a photo with my kids one day. I want to, I don't want to be a humiliated in photos. You know, sometimes getting to this point of righteous anger and being like, this is enough is enough. I know I can do better. So that's okay. We can harness a little bit of that. But here's the thing. Most people are using that push energy. Sometimes it works to get them into action to start making healthier choices. You know that feeling. Oh, I'm so disgusted. You know, maybe it's September or it's January and I'm like, ah, can't believe how my clothes are fitting. I got to do something about it. So that can be okay. Some people have enough willpower and grit to push through a diet or do something extreme. But what happens usually, you might relate to this, tell me if you do, is you do the thing, you do the diet, you do the extreme regime. Maybe you get enough willpower to freaking do that. Most people are so exhausted these days that they can't even start something like that because it's too overwhelming. So our world is so insane. But maybe you have enough willpower to do it. So you get going and one of two things usually happens. Tell me if you can resonate. Either you kind of get some progress, your weight's coming off a bit, and then you're like kind of lose focus, and you're like, ah, it's, things aren't that bad. Life's too busy. I'm giving, this is too hard. And you're like a little bit less in pain, a little bit less disgusted, so you just like stop the routine. You stop the workouts, you stop the healthy eating. That could happen. Another thing people have, have happened is they get to the goal. So maybe they were like, I gotta get sexy for like a beach trip or a wedding or a graduation of my kid or something because they want to look good in front of all their peers and then they get there they do the thing they get the photos and then that goal is gone so there's nothing pushing them driving them to do anything and then they lose the habits they are not even habits i wouldn't even call them habits they lose those those like i guess whatever they were sticking to rigidly they fall off of it because they've reached the goal that makes sense. So that's why that push energy is not really the best energy. Sometimes it's okay. I have to say that as a caveat because sometimes we have to just get so freaking mad and frustrated with the way things are um, to make a change. So like I got to a point with my house where I'm like, enough is enough. And I hired a woman, a home organizer, a spiritual home organizer who taught me energetic mindset, practical principles to help me get my house in order, help my get my kids on board. And honestly, I've made so many shifts in my home in the last few months. I'm still not where I want to be, but with grace and patience and continued support, I will get there. I know I will because I've made so much progress and I can see where I'm going. But basically, I want to share that because that push energy only works so long. So what works better and this is an energy thing and a mindset thing is why don't I let, instead of a pushing energy of what's wrong with me and I have to change and I've got this short timeline and uh, exhausting, what about having a goal that's all about how you want to feel in your body and it actually feels exciting. It feels doable. It might be a bit of a stretch, but it feels doable. And you're, you, you, you get some inspiration. You get some excitement towards it. So I'll show you a push goal, for example, to bring it to a practical. would be like, I should lose weight because my doctor said so. And I don't want to go on blood pressure meds. That could be a push goal. It's kind of heavy. There's a lot of shoulds. There's external stuff. Versus, I am so inspired and on track to releasing weight from my body so I can thrive, be big pharma free, um, and just like live my best life with ease. My joints feel amazing. Just have this goal to move towards that feels light and exciting. So that's a lot about the energy. Um, there's other mindset pieces to bring into it. A lot of people sabotage themselves because they don't believe they are either worthy or that they're capable of it. So because of either a lot of not enoughness, a lot of self-criticism, a lot of growing up, maybe being conditioned not to feel good enough, they don't feel worthy of their own success, so then they'll sabotage it. 
even if they're making good progress, they'll sabotage themselves. You might relate to that. Or there's the worthiness piece, but then there's also the self-belief piece. And sometimes they're intertwined. But the self-belief piece is like, well, I failed so many times. So what's going to be different this time? And so before they even start, it's like I'm thinking of an Olympic runner. What if before they even start the race, before the gun goes off, they're thinking, I'm probably going to fall. I'm definitely going to lose. I'm going to be the last one. How much is that going to play into their race versus someone on the starting line saying, I got this. I'm going to follow through. I'm going to do my best. I, I, I believe in myself, right? So sometimes people think the mindset piece is like kind of airy fairy and like out there and let's just focus on the food and the exercise. However, here's the thing. The food and the exercise is simple. It's simple. S-I-M-P-L-E. My mom used to say that. Keep it simple. It was simple. My mom who struggled with her weight basically her entire life that I, and I followed in her footsteps in a lot of ways. And then I broke the chains. I broke the conditioning. I broke the generational challenge that of weight that my family carried. But, um, where I was going with that was if you don't believe in yourself, I think I was going there. If you don't believe in yourself, no matter how much the simple food and nutrition, you know, and it's not that I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to be rude. I'm the person that knew it all. I was a I was a graduate from university. I had a kinesiology degree where I studied exercise prescription. I studied nutrition. I knew it all in my head, but I was not doing it. And here's why. Because my mindset was shit. My mindset was I'm not worthy. I'm fat. I'm always probably going to struggle with my weight because my mom did and my grandma did and I am just big boned. I never follow through on anything. I've done 20, 30 diets and I never kept the weight off. So what's going to be different this time? My mindset was in the tubes. And so no wonder every time I tried to adhere to a very simple strategy of nutrition and exercise, I did not stick to it. And even if I did, I never did it long term. Maybe I did it long enough to see some results but never long term. So we got to combine the practical, the nutrition, the exercise, keep it simple, small changes. We get to combine, ah, not trying so damn hard. Just make it a little easier. We got to, we got to combine minds, the peaceful mindset, the prioritizing better sleep, having a more healthy overall lifestyle to support actually being excited to do the exercise and energized enough to do the exercise and having enough energy to go to the grocery store, enlist meal planning support, whatever. And then the mindset is huge. Having something to move towards instead of the push energy and then having this self-belief and this worthiness that fuels it all. And man, when you have those three things working together, the strategy the lifestyle, the less intense lifestyle, the more restful lifestyle that allows weight to release from your body and then the belief system and the excitement to move towards a beautiful goal. Man, when you bring those all together, it's such a harmony that happens. And <clears throat> yeah, I just really wanted to share, like it doesn't have to be so hard. It just start, starts with one step and it starts with making a decision and creating a vision that's compelling and exciting. And so I'd say that would be step one, is saying, what do I really desire? What do I want? What do I deserve? I did that with my home. I wanted a beautiful, tidy, organized, minimalist, easy to maintain home for my family to thrive in. And so that was, that is the vision. That is the vision that pulls me to want to do my daily practices. Guess what? One thing I really thought, and this was one of the things I had to belief break on, I had to break this old belief system was that just doing a whole bunch of at once was the solution. I'll just like, I'll spend a whole day cleaning. 
once a week and then that and then it'll be all all fine throughout the week and then I'll do that again. And I'll just let it kind of accumulate and then I'll do a big day of it. Well guess what was happening? A it looked like crap throughout the week, so I didn't feel at ease. My body was stressed, I hated it. B I didn't want to do a whole day of cleaning any day of the week. So I'd get to that day, usually Sunday, and I was tired and I wanted to rest and have fun with my kids and just make pancakes and like just savor my life. And I couldn't because I had saved all of my chores till Sunday. Um, and not to mention overwhelm. I was like looking at all these heaps of like clothes and buckets. I would have everything in buckets that throughout the week I hadn't put in the right full place. So I had buckets of stuff to put away. And so I had to say to myself, Charmaine, is this belief really true? Does a beautiful maintained home happen once a week? Or does it happen in a little bit each day? And part of what helped me break that belief was I hired this home organizer and she came in and she said, here's the tools. A, tool one, new mindset. If it has a place, put it away now. She actually said, don't put it down, put it away. And I don't personally like the word don't, so I changed it to if it has a home, put it away now. And so that's been my mantra. If it has a place, put it away now. If it has a place, and I've been working on it, okay? And it's making a big difference in my life. Sometimes I still don't put it in its place, and then I have to do it later, and it's never fun later. The only thing worse than doing it now is doing it later. That's my husband's catchphrase. Um, yeah, the only thing worse than doing it now is doing it later. It's so true. But so that's one tool. And so I had to break this belief system that I just let it all accumulate. It'll do it later. It'll do it later. I'll do it Sunday. And I had to say, no, this isn't working. And this woman pointed out to me, how's that working for you? And I'm like, is that working too damn good? Uh, too damn well. So the second piece was she recommended, and this is where your own discernment comes in too, because she's like, do 15, a 15 minute power clean every day and like keep this journal and, and it was a great tool. And then I just sort of, personally, my life's a little more flowy with my kids home and stuff. So um, I just do it at certain times. It's like, okay, the kids are eating breakfast and playing. So now I'm gonna unload the dishwasher or whatever. But anyways, I took her this idea of like daily habits. And then why I'm sharing this, believe it or not, and there's a segue to the weight loss journey, the weight release journey. If we, and I don't know if you've ever thought this, but if we wait and say, oh, I'm just gonna keep waiting till the perfect time is right, or I'm just gonna like do a ton on one day a week towards my weight loss, weight release journey, I personally think that's too overwhelming. It's kind of like setting us up for failure. So what works better is small incremental changes as many days as you can in a row that starts to lead to real momentum and change. And that could look like, you know what? And this depends where you're at, right? It could look like I'm gonna walk today, you know? And it could be a block, it could be a kilometer, it could be 5,000 steps. I mean, it's gonna depend where you're starting from, but some people go, okay, I gotta work out an hour a day, every day, five days a week, and then I gotta go on this crazy regime with my food. But what if it was like, hey, I'm gonna start walking, for a couple of weeks, get in that momentum, feel, celebrate that. I'm going to start drinking more water. Um, maybe put a number to it. I'm going to drink like two liters of water, eight glasses of water a day, whatever. And you just start to build, right? It's kind of like the timing analogy. It's not like, oh, one day I'm just going to spend a hundred hours and do it all. Cause that's not fun. And that's not realistic. And that's not, that sure isn't for me at least. So that's why also your discernment comes in. What's going to work for you? So that's what I wanted to share with you is just really kind of tying the tidiness of my house analogy to the weight loss, the weight release world. I think they actually really kind of, I hope the metaphor resonated. It sure did for me. Um, I just, it's so funny because this woman, she's actually coming over tomorrow, this home organizer. And I've had her come in like every couple months for the last little while. Um, and it's just been so cool because I'm like, this is a new skill for me. I did not learn this growing up and no shame to my parents. Maybe it was just me. I don't know, but I didn't learn these life skills growing up about keeping a tidy home. 
And now at 38 years old, almost 39, I'm like, I want this. And I want to take pride in my home and I want to teach my kids. And that could be another goal for some people watching. It's like, I'm doing it for myself. Yes, number one, for sure. I think it has to be for ourselves, number one. But then I'm also doing it for my kids because I don't want them to end up like me, so struggling with, you know, daily habits and like things that a lot of people are really equipped at. I wasn't. And so I don't want that for my kids. And I think a lot of moms especially can relate to like, yeah, I don't want my kids to have such bad habits with food and exercise and struggle so much with their weight. So using that as like a little secondary motivation, I really want to set a great example for my kids, um, if that relates for you at all. So that's what I wanted to share today. And so I would invite you to think about for yourself, what's that vision for your body? And, and this is a worthwhile, this is a really worthwhile exercise. You don't have to get fancy. It doesn't have to be a goal. That just might seem heavy to some of us, but I just invite you to just, I just invite you to take a notebook. I just looked at this notebook. My daughter came yesterday and I was teaching a workout at the gym and I said, Kennedy, if you get bored, you can take notes <laughs> on what I say, and, you know, because she thinks it's interesting to be a fitness trainer. So she said, turn out feet, chest proud. I think that's super cute. Um, and she drew a dumbbell that's 100 pounds. <laughs> Anyways, so taking that notebook and then just have fun, like. Just like let yourself dream a little bit. Maybe it feels far away, but how do you most desire? And I, whenever I have a new client, we really go through this on a deep level. How do you desire to look, feel, perform? And just write some notes on it. What would excite you? Because if your goal and your desire doesn't really excite you, it's gonna be hard to create new habits to, to get there. But if you're just like, yes, I want this. I like, I want this so much. I know I can do it. Like that's like with my house. I'm like, I know this is possible and I know I'm worthy of it. And so when I do the daily actions to get to my desire for my home, I'm like, I can check off a list. I can feel really proud. I'm like giving myself hugs. So I want you to do that. I want you to just celebrate yourself. We are so, without retraining our brains, we are so hard on ourselves. It's unbelievable. I can't believe how much we're conditioned to be so tough on ourselves. And it doesn't help. It doesn't help us get anywhere really well, really fast. <laughs> it helps us get nowhere fast. Um, so just like, give yourself a squeeze. You, you watched this, you did this training. I'm so proud of you. So I invite you to write down what you most desire for your body. And then I want you to write down Three things. What, what do you think you could do? Really, not, not adding a lot of pressure on your shoulders, but what could you do nutrition-wise that would be healthy and that would help you lighten your load and, and would be a good thing? And, and it could be so simple. And I want you to just go with your first gut instinct. If you're totally drawing a blank, maybe it's drink more water. Maybe it's consume more real alive foods like fruits and veggies um you know maybe it's cook at home more you know just pick something and then i want you to ask yourself what could you do for movement what's like something you could do for movement that would really you know feel good it would be progress for you it would be a little bit of a stretch remembering our body is meant to move if we stop moving we start losing our mobility we don't feel good our energy stagnates in our body don't think of it as a calorie burning thing. Just what could you do for a movement that would be a gift to your body? And maybe that's, I don't know, a five minute dance break once a day. Maybe that's getting out for a walk every day or a couple days a week. Just what, what, what feels right to you with movement? And then I invite you thinking about something with your lifestyle so maybe stress or sleep what's one thing you could do to just up level I don't, I'm all about upgrades instead of saying what what we can't do or what we have to cut out I like to focus on what can we upgrade so maybe it's just I'm going to you know 
do this for my stress relief. I'm going to take three deep breaths. I'm going to set a timer on my phone every two hours that says take three deep breaths. And that could just be something that helps you bring your body into more peace. So I've got so many strategies for this stuff and I could go on for days about each of those topics. However, I just wanted to give you something tangible to start with. And I do want to share with you, I do have some various programs, support, um, one-on-one, -on -one, different options like that. Also just follow along, kind of do it at your own pace type things, more self-directed. So if you feel like you're really resonating with what you saw in the video and you feel like you're ready for the next step, you're ready for some more direction, you're ready for a bit of accountability or support um, to just help you along the path, definitely reach out and I can help point you in the right direction. And if you want to share your, your desire for your body and a couple of those action steps that we just talked about in the last couple of minutes, I love to hear from you. I love this stuff. This is really what my passion is and what I love to help people with, especially women. So I hope you have a beautiful day. And I want to just remind you, anything is possible. It can be easier than you ever imagined. When you get your energy and your mindset going in the right direction, everything gets easier, monumentally easier. So lots of love to you, lots of light to you. And yeah, you're amazing. You're worthy of feeling and looking and moving your best. And I know it's your birthright and it's possible for you. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm just sending you lots of love and support and energy. And I look forward to seeing you in all the ways we see you. Bye for now.